regard it as physical for us physically and mentally. They say there's some microbe in the soil that actually affects your mood. Yeah, and it makes you more happy. Huh? Yeah, the, the number of research projects on that is quite fascinating. It's good aerobic strength building exercise, it's mentally stimulating, emotional satisfaction. Are they isolated what the bacteria what? They what? have, I can't remember the name of it, but if you, if you Google that, you can find it. Right? Yeah, that they have it. <coughs> Actually, it's THC. No, it's <laughs> the, I don't think it's THC. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? What is it? He's laughing and saying it's THC. THC. It depends on what your garden contains. <laughs> right? <laughs> so as far as the gardener is concerned, before we, before we do work in the garden, we want to exercise and stretch out. Because a lot of us in the summertime will go out early in the morning before it gets too hot. So we're up right out of bed, out in the garden. You want to make sure that your, your muscles are well stretched out. Um, and also avoid temperature extremes on the hot times of the day. Protect yourself, all various things you like to have, light color, uh, loose clothing, sturdy footwear, hats, sunscreen, sunglasses, etc. Uh, and also be aware of our toxic plants that we talked about earlier today, and critical plants. And also our soil pH runs around eight or nine, typically in the Las Vegas Valley. And some individuals, including myself, we work the soil with bare hands, we start to get these very painful slits in your fingers that are very, very painful and take a long time to, to, uh, to heal. So we generally recommend that people wear a good impervious type glove. I showed this one earlier today also. That's got rubberized palm and fingers, but it's got cloth on the back. So it's very it's much easier for, for grasping and stretching. You're not straining as much and you get that nice cooling effect from the cloth side. So there's a lot of different varieties of this type of glove. So why is it important that uh is the basicness of the soil That's or what the basic of the Yeah, we're thinking it's the basicness of the soil. Okay. And also we like to plan your day to break up repetitive tasks to avoid stressing any particular part of the body. So let's say I have an area on the side of this table that I need to weed. And it's interspersed with other plants, so I can't just take a hoe to it. I have to be there picking out the weeds, doing that grasping pinching technique. So I may do just half of this today. And then I'll go and I'll do some other raking and other jobs somewhere else to use other body parts and other muscle groups. And then tomorrow I might do that other half. So you want to break up the tasks. Okay, so we'll talk a little bit more about how we do that. So we're looking at um, not only the tools, but how we perform the tasks in what order. We also have to be concerned about heat-related illnesses uh, as our summers get hotter and longer. We want to try to make garden early in the day, no your limitations, be aware of heat-related illness symptoms. For heat cramps and heat exhaustion, we have sweating, cramping of the muscles, headache, dizziness, nausea. And last week I was out, I was weeding one bed, and I started to feel a little dizzy, and I, well, I only have a few more weeks to go, but I said, you know, I'm going to stop. I'm going to go in, I'm going to cool off, and then I'll come out later and finish. So it's easy to try and push yourself to finish something. But when you start to feel these symptoms, it's telling you you need to take a break. If people ignore those symptoms, sometimes they can progress to heat stroke, where you have a lack of sweating, and you can be very quickly become incoherent and early loss of consciousness. And this is a true medical emergency, is the heat stroke. And you need to get a person immediately to a hospital as soon as we uh, as someone detects that. Yes. My wife likes to be gardening. She tells me to go gardening. I get all those symptoms even before I go gardening. <laughs> so that could be a problem. That could be a problem. We like to get acclimatized. Sometimes if you get acclimatized to the heat, and we go out a little at a time at the early part of the summer, the spring and summer, and then as the, the, the real heat hits, you're a little more adaptable to that, uh, to that particular climate. So prevention, we want to get acclimatized slowly over a number of weeks. And then if you're on vacation somewhere or on holiday, somewhere and you're in a different climate and come back to the heat, it may take a while to get a climate ties back to the before. And we have some interesting um, guidelines here. The state of California, uh, Cal OSHA, has uh, promulgated a, a guidelines on heat stress. Uh, how many hours you, will, you can be out in the sun, and where you have breaks, um, what to do if somebody starts to suffer some symptoms, and all these different criteria to help eliminate uh, heat-related illnesses. So if you have, want more information on details of a heat stress program, 
look up Cal OSHA, Cal OSHA, uh, and wonderful guideline on that. And then we have various cooling techniques you can use. These cooling bandanas that you can, uh, you can refrigerate them and they can go on your forehead, on your neck, or on your wrists where you have a lot of blood flow that can help cool your body down. On the wide rim pad, loose, light colored clothes. Or if you have a pool in the backyard, if I get two little bubbles of pop cool and cool off, and being low humidity here, we get good average cooling. And that will allow you to work a little bit, a little bit more so. My husband will put up a, a tent who's working outside or we'll put an electric fan nearby just to keep the air moving around. And you want to stay hydrated, but you want to avoid coffee, tea, alcohol, because they can dehydrate you. I saw this cute t-shirt in the mail order catalog one time that says, how can I be so thirsty today if I drank so much last night? <laughs> so you gotta be careful of, of the alcohol. Okay, take frequent breaks before symptoms arise. Carry a cell phone when you're working alone in the yard or utilize the buddy system. So whenever we go out in the yard, we always have a bottle of water with us. Or if we're going somewhere in the car, we always have a bottle of water with us. Because you never know, you're going to break down and you don't want to stay hydrated. I worked for Liberty Mutual for five years at the beginning of my career in safety back in the early 80s. And Liberty Mutual did a lot of research. Uh, had it spearheaded by a gentleman called Stover. <coughs> And they had a research facility in Boston where they, they did a lot of biomechanical research on what are appropriate ways people should move to reduce injury. What uh, are the limits of that, the weights that they should be lifting repetitively? And they put out a bunch of wonderful research on ergonomics. And they designed something or developed something called the Golden Zone. where they say that when you perform work in the golden zone, <coughs> that you're less likely to get stress and strain. So the golden zone basically is you go out 90 degrees from the center of your body, and then it's shoulder height to about thigh height. So if you do any work, manipulating work, repetitive work in this area, you're less likely to get a stress or strain. If you're reaching up here, or way over there, way down there, you're putting undue stress and strain on the body. But as a gardener, you can't stay, everything isn't going to be in your golden zone. I have a rose you know, bush up here, I need to prune something here, or pick some fruit, or I have weeds down here I need to deal with. So basically what we try and do is to keep the work in the golden zone. So we have different kinds of stools that we can use. I brought one little guy here that I use all the time at home. I'll do it up here where everybody can see me. And it folds out. So if I want to trim a rose bush that has you know, some dead branches around this height, okay, now I'm working in the golden zone. Okay. If I want to pick some weeds that are on the ground, I can flip it over. And now I'm doing something again more for And I love these. They help you get up. Ah. Okay. Great little tool. 20 bucks at the hardware store. And then they collapse up for easy storage. They even have a little um, sack on the side you can put for tools in it. <coughs> they come in many different varieties and forms. But that is a very good way to, to stay in the golden zone. Want to keep heavy objects close to the body, they're in mutual foul. They can use stools and dealers, and also to plant vertically. Rather than having everything in the ground, having the planter boxes higher up. No, these you don't stay on that. These you don't actually stay on that. No. 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 Yeah, what's that? What's that? That is just called <coughs> garden dealer. K N garden dealer. K N D E L E R. Garden dealer. Now, as far as typical ways that people can lift, um, they, did, they, they used to say lift with a straight back, and then oh, they just put so much strain on the back and on the knees. So they revised that to say lift with a combination of your knees and your back, and try and keep it close to the body. Uh, 
typically 35 pounds for women, 45 pounds for men, less if you're a senior, have osteoporosis, or if you're carrying the object in long distance. If it weighs too much, get help. So some people use like a little sled, a little handle on it, they can, they can scoot things along the yard. They have these pot lifters that you can put over a pot when you have two people to pick it up on either side. And also, you want to avoid static loads. So this gentleman here is leaning over to do something. And when you lean over, you figure half of your body mass, depending if you're man, male or female, is being suspended and just held in place by your vertebrae and the muscles in your back. It doesn't look like you're working, but your body is working. So what he's done with his left hand is he put his left hand on his leg to help support some of the upper body weight. So try to avoid just leaning over with no support. You can put your hand down and support the other body weight, and then you can do that activity a little bit further away. Just these small changes in the way we do things can really make a difference. And you can, at the end of the day, you go, oh man, my back is killing me. You didn't realize that static load was putting a lot of a lot of work. Well, there's a lot of different kinds of motion injuries that we're all familiar with that can occur gardening or or uh, needlepoint, so many different hobbies we do um, we can have these problems. Rotator cuff, tennis elbow, carpal tunnel, trigger finger, and also the tarsal tunnel. How many people have heard of tarsal tunnel syndrome? A few of you have. Okay, well, we'll talk briefly about, about a few of these. Probably the most common one we see with the people uh, in gardening is carpal tunnel syndrome, and that's repetitive gripping, pinching, or pressure on the palm that causes swelling of tendons and that will, will um, pinch the nerves that serve the fingers. Yeah, the symptoms are a pain, not a stingling, typically the thumb and the first two fingers, and it usually occurs hours after the activity. They wake, wake up in the middle of the night. Yeah, you wake up in the middle of the night and your hand is throbbing, and what the heck is that all about? It's because what you did earlier in the day just caused too much inflammation of the, the tendons running through the carpal tunnel. I actually get that as well. I mean, oh, yes. You know, oh, for sure. I have that as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. Does it happen still? Or was that? Yeah, I think it does. So you have to just. I and after, after some, some extended uh, juice issues. Right. Yeah. 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 It does happen. And I had it, had it too. I did needlepoint when I was pregnant with my son. And all that extra edema from being pregnant had, had caused. But I still have never had surgery because I've always been careful with what I do. So I haven't needed to have surgery. But if people work in an industry like deboning chickens, and they're constantly grabbing the knife and doing all of this, and then another chicken, and then they do it you know, day after day, week after week, month after month, this can become a permanent painful situation that requires surgery. Uh, it is a little bit less invasive than it used to be, but it can still cause some uh, decline usage and strength in the hand. Uh, the surgery, is it, um uh, they, they what, what, what they do? They Basically, they, they go in and they uh, increase the diameter of the carpal tunnel. Yeah. So it gives you more, <coughs> more room to get in there. So how do we avoid carpal tunnel syndrome? Be aware of other hobbies that can contribute, right? And use ergonomic tools that are wide and span the palm. So this is a wonderful hand trowel. When I grasp it, covers a large part of the palm and puts less pressure on the carpal tunnel versus this tool, hard metal, that presses right into the palm. But that's not a good tool. Some can also offer mechanical assistance. This is a hip cleaner that has a ratchet system. So if I'm cutting through a large um, branch, or a very, very dry branch, I, I Crunch down until it's hard, I get resistance. I lift it up, it goes to another gear, and it goes through it very easily, rather than being all that pressure on the palm. So look for tools that are ratcheted, and that will also help with, uh, relieve the pressure on the palm. And again, vary your, your activities with your muscle groups. Don't ever use your palm as a And keep your hand and wrist in a neutral, and then you manipulate something. There's very little friction going through the carpal tunnel. But if I have my hand in this position and I'm manipulating something, or in this position and I'm manipulating something, it's 
extra has to go an extra distance through the carpal tunnel and can cause more irritation if I'm in this position or this position than if I'm in the neutral position. So we try and always keep your hands in a neutral position when you're working as much as possible. So here it shows both this way and also side to side. You want to try and keep it as much in the neutral position as you can. So a lot of the tools now that they come out with are, are padded in some way. This one has a rubberized coating on it. This one I'm going to pass around. What I like about it is on either side it has like a gel, squeezable gel thing. So your palm and then your fingers are touching that lovely, you know, squishy gel and just a wonderful handle. Uh, Corona makes a lot of these tools. There's a number of other manufacturers out there as well. But some people like the pistol grip, depending upon the angle that you're working. Sometimes a pistol grip is better to keep your hand in that neutral position. Or if you have a lot of tools that aren't padded, just get some bicycle gloves which have pads already built in, then you don't have to go out and spend $30 on a trowel when you have one that you could use as long as you adapt it. They even have some hand pruners that rotate handles, have rotating handles. There's so many different wonderful ergonomic tools out there. <coughs> the ratchet pruners I showed you, they have something called a flex dial pruner, which you dial in whatever width you want on your pruner. It's just doing like little trimming a little uh, mini rows. You don't need your, your pruners to have a wide span. You just need a little bit. You can dial it to just give it a little bit. And if you want to go <coughs> wider, you can dial it up to eight, and you can get a little larger finger. That way you have less movement on the hand. You just give it a little bit rather than a lot. Again, that's working smarter, not harder. Also, sharp knives are good. Everybody remembers that crocodile that day. That's not an eye. This is an eye. Yeah. <laughs> and this guy is really amazing. It's got blades on both sides. <coughs> super, super sharp. So if you're trying to cut through something, less stress and strain in the body. Some of these Japanese uh, knives are really amazing. If anybody wants to come and see it, I'll let you come and see it up here. Because it, it is a, it is definitely. Is there a negative on the reason why it's actually curved? Why it's actually curved? Rather than actually straight. That's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah, but it, it, it works very well. Because we have a lot of agave <coughs> plants out here, and when the, the base petals leaves dry out, they are so, so tough. They're made of sisal, which is one of the toughest fibers known to man. So trying to cut through those is just really, really tough. So that makes it a very easy job. Also, one thing I like to do is I like to switch off and use both hands. So let's say I'm turning a rose bush. <coughs> and I see some major limbs that definitely need to be cut off. And I can easily do that with my less dominant hand. They're easy to get to. But oh no, there's one back in there, and I need to help get over there. Okay, so then I'll switch to my right hand and do the trickier cuts with my right hand. So you're spreading out the load between both hands. You can do the same thing for digging casts. Okay? Try and use both hands as much as possible. Okay. We also make some tools that have adjustable grip locations. Because you may grip the handle, it, it, that's great for one thing, but then you're going to be over there, you need a different angle. So if you have a tool that you can grip it anywhere along the handle to keep the wrist neutral, that's more adaptable, adaptable to work for the different jobs that you're going to be doing. And this shovel here, I'm going to bring it, but it's pretty heavy. It has a center um, handle that you can rotate whatever position you want it to be in for whatever job you're doing. If I'm going to use shoveling this way, I'll have the handle like that. If I'm going to be shoveling that way, I might rather have the handle in a different position. So that's kind of a nice one for doing a lot of digging. So you keep that uh, big stand in a neutral position. And then these are also nice too. You can grip anywhere you want along those tools. So what's the circle for? The circle is so you can grip it wherever. Uh, right, so then you can keep your hand in a neutral position for it, however you're manipulating that tool. Because you don't always know. It's not always going to be the same exact motion. Yeah, so it gives you some variability, flexibility in where you can, can hold it. Also, it's nice to have some tools that have an adjustable length for them. If you're working on a, a garden <coughs> on the ground, you want the handle longer, then you can zoom it in if you're going to be <coughs> using a, a tool for a raised bed. So you can zoom the handle in and out. So 
those are all handicapped, especially for handicapped people. That so what's that problem like? Yeah, the problem that yeah. also telescopes out. It's like a little, it's like a little toner. Three to three. Yeah, it's like I'm doing something nearby, but if I want to prove something high up, I can telescope it out. Yeah. Amazing genius what tools they have out there. One of my favorite tools to avoid bending and kneeling is a floral shovel, which is a long-handled shovel, but it has a very small head at the top. And our soils out here are very rocky. So you take a great big shovel and you try and go into the ground and you know, maybe go down an inch. Or if you want to plant a little plant, just some little, tiny little plant, you can either get down on the ground on your hands and knees and use your upper body to dig that hole. Or I can use my floral shovel while standing up and dig that same little hole. Okay? And a lot more ergonomic big sound, using bigger muscle groups, not having to bend down because some people have bad knees. And it's just great. Also, as a female, when I'm trying to move dirt, if I have a big shovel, ugh, I'm moving a lot of weight. Where I'd rather do a few more of the exercise with less weight. That's less strain on my back. So for a number of reasons, these four shovels are very, very handy for many, many tasks. Is the them. size also good for head penetration? If you had a bigger shovel head, would it not penetrate the soil? So having a small head will get transferred. It will, yeah, because so you have less resistance. If I have a great big shovel that's this wide, I'm okay. more likely to hit a rock. Good. Yeah, than digging up with something like this. We have a lot of alluvial soil here. So our backyard is just filled with a lot of lovely round river rocks. But everywhere you dig, oh. you hit another rock. Yeah. And those are generally available at most of your big box stores. Talk a little about some of the stools that they have. This is a cute one that you can roll around in and then store it here behind it. We'll show you the little tool pouch that you can have on the side. Also, it's good to have tools that are non-slip. Again, this bad tool that we're talking about, if it becomes slippery, if my hands are sweating, you have to grip it harder so it doesn't slip down and slide. Where if you have a tool that has a rubberized handle to it, it is somewhat slip resistant. You don't have to grab it quite as hard. But again, that's better on your hand. But let's say this is one you inherited from grandma and you really like it and you want to keep using it. Well, they do have different add-on plastic grips. They make a spray that you can spray on it and it dries to a nice pretty surface. They also make dippable plastics that you can dip it in and let it dry. And they even have different wraps like they use for baseball bats and other sports equipment. So there's many ways you can adapt the tool you have. You don't always have to go out and find the tool. And then also the, uh, the grippy gloves that we were talking about earlier can be helpful for that grip strength. And then they even make a canvas type that have the little um, dimples on it, the little rubber, rubber dimples on it that also are good for grippy surface. There's a lot of ways to get around that problem. One other thing that's good to, to keep in mind too is if you're using a spray wand of water, some of the old fashioned ones, you have to just kind of grip it and hold it down with your hand strength while you're watering. And again, that is not good extra pressure on the palm. So a lot of them now have a locking mechanism. I press this down, then I can flip this little uh, wire there, and it holds it in place for me. So now I'm just holding the tool and not gripping, having to press down on it. So that's one important thing to do. And also, if I want to switch from this attachment say, to another attachment, typically you have to unscrew it. Maybe I want to screw it on, so you're doing all this extra motion. They have these interesting quick release um, mechanisms you can buy similar to what you find on like a fresh air pressure hose. That this would be my hose here. This is connected to my hose, and this is the, the female end. And I just pull it back, boom, it's on. If I want to switch to this other one, I pull it off, boom, that easy. And you can buy these at the hardware stores and you get just the one female end that goes on to your hose. And then you get a number of the male ends that go on to the different attachments that you want to be able to put on and interchange very easily and quickly. So these are small things, but when you're adding them all up, especially for seniors, this makes a big difference in what they can do in the yard and do it safely. Um, 
Okay, looking at the objects, we talked a little bit about the pot lifter, different types of sleds. Uh, wheelbarrows, typically two or four wheels are better. They also have these cute little collapsible carts that you can buy and you can use them for, for gardening and other things. So there's just so much out there. So why do we Pardon? Why do we um, it's just more stability. stability. Yeah, if you're going over a terrain that's not real level, if you, you know, even with like a one wheel or a you got a with two wheels, yeah, so four wheels is always kind of a little bit more stable. And I like to keep my tools accessible. We have about a half acre yard here, and at first we started to store all my garden tools in the separate garage. So I said, okay, I need a hand I all the way in the garage, get the hand all the way back, use it, and take it all the way back, and put it away. Like, no, I want something else. So for my birthday one year, my lovely husband gave me my little potty bench, which is kind of in the center of the backyard by, by, the, by our bedroom. And I have my tools there, I have other supplies in here, I have pots and things I can use, so if I need something, I'm boom, I have it right handy, or I can use it. Some people will stage different things around the yard. In the far end of the yard, I have a rose bush or something, I'll put a pair of pruners in the hand. Then when I need to go prune it, I can do that. I can waste in there and I can store my tools in there as well. This is a cute little rolly uh, stool that you can get. A little uh, container that goes inside. You can cup all of it, for those say. You know, I'm thinking of everything in this case. This is another little satchel that I have when I take out to the Master Gardener Center and work out in the garden there. I have all my tools and everything uh, in my little satchel. So, so modular type devices, we have applications, multiple applications. Yeah, yeah. Again, being, having that flexibility is very important. And also we want to maintain your tools, <coughs> keep them clean, sharp, and lubricated and usable. And also it's nice that the handles are bright color. This, these, this is a nice tool except it's green and my plants are green. So I'm, I'm cutting something and then I put this down and I go, okay, now I'm going to put this in the waste over there and then now where's my, where's my printer again? Okay, it's somewhere in there. Yeah. So it's, it's nice if you have things that are more bright and colored. That's why a lot of your you know, tools are are bright and colored. And there's no one tool that's right for everyone, so you have to kind of try it out a little bit. I had one garden club where one lady said, "I have a tool that I don't like." And the other lady said, "Well, I want to try it." I said, "Do a tool exchange. Everybody bring in one tool, and then everybody else can try it and see which one you like." Because I found this was the only ratcheting pruner I could find at the local hardware store, but it is just so huge for my hand. And this is great for my husband. But, but for me, this isn't that good because it's just too big. So it's good to try them out and see what works for you. Okay, this picture came from a gardening blog that I get, and it's called Gardenista. And they have you know different things. Like here's somebody's garden in England, and, and here's uh, some interesting new paper. You can use anything about gardening. They have this little blog. So one day, when I was doing this research on all these ergonomic tools, this popped up. From the Garden East of Love, gardening tools, which trowel or weeder is best for you? I don't know if we can turn the lights off to make it seem a little easier to see. It's very small. Yeah, the handle, the handle. So so this, this, is, so this is a trowel. How many things are wrong with this? It's small. It's hard. It's, thin. it's very thin. It's metal. It's, it's not it's sharp. It's edges. not padded. It's got sharp edges to it. Yeah. And what color is it in the sunshine? Oh, very Oh my gosh, to leave that down on the ground, it's going to get hot. So I was so tempted to, to write them back and say, this is what I think of your tools. A narrow, uncanny handle, sharp edges. They also they get slippery. And then the top of the blade here is sharp, so my hand slides down and crashes into that. Um, dark enough to hot in the sun. It's going to be heavy. It's solid metal. And it's easy to misplace in the garden. Ah, so yeah. What a, you know, and they're selling these things for only $40. Oh my gosh. It might be nice to have on the wall as a decoration. <laughs> but that's not the wall I could use it for. But isn't it sad that this, in today's day and age that they would actually market something like this to the public? That's kind of crazy. That was the idea that they made one that has been used for hundreds of years, and that's why. Right. Yeah, it's, it's a relic. It's, yeah, it's a relic. Yeah, it's a relic. Yeah, it's a relic. And like, you know, the grandma's tool that you know, yeah, passed down. Yeah, really, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so as far as gloves go, again, we talked a little bit about the impervious gloves for the irritating sap and 
Um, the leather gloves we mentioned earlier today for a lot of your prickly things, your, your cacti and your roses to keep them from um, getting in your, your skin. Uh, the gauntlets are the large ones for your large plants. Uh, grippy palm gloves, which are good for slippery items. Or heavy jersey gloves for rough branches. Night trial gloves if you're doing delicate work like separating out seeds. And also barrier creams are really cool. I don't know if people have used barrier creams before. But they're either silicone based or they are wax based, hair based. And you put, put it on and it not like the hand creams that soak in, it stays on the surface and helps to give you a protective layer. Then you put your gloves on over that and if people want to just pick a little bit of on your hands, that's a lovely feel to it. Uh, then you can, once you finish working, take your gloves off, wash your hands. You don't have all the dirt and stuff and all the little nooks and crannies, cracks and crevices of your hands. And it's a wonderful thing to use it a lot in, in industries where they have a problem with rheumatitis. Yeah, and it's, it's very, very nice. And uh, we like to use that in combination with gloves out here because of the high pH soils that we have. And it just helps keep your skin a lot, a lot healthier. By uh, by loving you, Barry, for your free watch. Oh, yeah? You loved it, yeah. You did all the washing, you loved the water, the dishes, and the stuff. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. 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 Thank you.
try and prune them so that you can pick all the fruit from standing on the ground. We've had an orchard up on the north side of Las Vegas for over 25 years, and all the fruit trees are still small enough that we can pick them the and then trim your other plants and trees to avoid the use of ladders. Now we look at location and design of the garden. We want to have efficient access to the garden and a proper structure that makes it more efficient and easier to work through. We try to avoid steep slopes and stairs and have them <coughs> out there at night 